Dr. Cook. I'd like to call the Merit System Commission to order. It is June 6, 2024, 11 a.m. Call to order. Mr. Kempe? Here. Mr. Rodehaver? Here. Mrs. Wasty? Here. Um, approval of minutes. Everybody got a chance to read them? Yes. Any questions, additions, or subtractions? No, ma'am. No. Approved is submitted. First item of business, entry level police officer advertisement. Okay, you are? Case Newbauer, Deputy Chief. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure he was on the record. Um, I'm sure you've gone over this advertisement with the Chief. Is everything correct? Yes, so with, with exception of we had, uh, I had presented two um, processes for the entry level position uh, for your review. So we were asking uh, that a modification in the process be made for this entry level process to uh, try to assist us with expediting uh, our application and testing process. And I submitted, Amy, yes. you gave me that letter, kind of yeah. just, or it just explaining kind of where yeah. we're at with everything. Yeah. 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 Page five in your packet is the memo, and then the first um, first ad that you see in the packet is the normal ad where we do the NTN testing, and um, the second ad in your packet is with the proposed, um, not really a change, but just a revision in the order that they're currently going. The actual process. Correct. So just, just to uh, give some further insight in that, what we are finding in today's job market is that by the time we run a process and, and to our own uh, accord, the two to three weeks or, or potentially four weeks that we're advertising, we'll get an application in uh, early on in the process. And our applicants that are coming in early have found a job by the time that we can actually get to them to start our process. So um, we were hoping to change this to kind of move things along similar to the lateral process in that we, re we can receive names uh, right at the time of application and go on to a, a competitive board interview. And I have, uh, I have our questions uh, that we have been using on our board interviews that all have a numeric value uh, that I can present to you and show you if you're interested to see those. But we could, um, we could also, so that there's a potential for 135 points out of our interview process to mirror it with our existing standard of a 70% passing score, um, they would need to obtain a 94.5 in that. So we can still have it uh, competitive and give them a, a value score. Uh, and then our thought would be after we receive those scores, compile a list, we can present it to merit service to certify the poten potential applicants. So you're saying no more testing, just interview. Well, the, the, the competitive nature of it would be a, a, a board interview with a numeric score. Okay. Is that in agreement with our rules? Well, in, we had talked with Chief before about once they completed that interview that there would be an in-house exam, written exam, that, that they would be given yes. at that time. But not an interview. Well, the interview would come first. Okay, that's fine. As opposed to the exam. They're first. just changing not, so instead of testing and then interview the interview then testing that way they can weed out some of the weaker applicants and get better quality applicants is that what i'm gathering sir yeah so i don't i, I and i talked with the chief a little bit more and uh i think if we could actually have a process that's the competitive interview uh is the score that we're going to go on and forego a written test um I think that's something that he would be willing to try or wants to try. Um, again, our, the, the biggest problem that we're having is, uh, so we haven't been largely successful in our, our processes uh, for a variety of reasons, but the time lapse that we have is making that even more complicated. So what we're trying to do is, is expedite that to the lat like the lateral process where Aaron's right now, he's sending over applications every Friday and we can make contact with him, set up board interviews and move on them. Um, that's, that's our whole goal is try to speed along the process because we've seen, I know some other agencies right now are, you, you basically apply for another agency and they will give you a conditional offer of employment just based on submitting an application. 
So in an applicant's mind, uh, they don't want to pursue our process because they already have a conditional offer with Dayton. However, that being said, I mean, the conditional offer details that you have to pass a background investigation, all those steps are included. But in their mind, Dayton is being more competitive with hiring than potentially what we can offer. We would vet our applicants and make sure they're appropriate before we give them that conditional offer. So um, we are, and, and I, it, we, we are just, we're trying to stay competitive in the job market, um, change things that will make us more competitive, and that's kind of where we're at. It's, it's a difficult job market right now uh, for a variety of reasons. We, we still want to seek the best applicants possible. What we're finding now is that we, we don't really even have a competitive process just with the mere fact of, I can't remember the last time we had to come and ask for more names on, a, on an eligibility list. Uh, because we've had our 10 that was, you know, given to us. Um, what we're finding now is we will call our applicants. They won't respond to us. They don't complete the necessary paperwork. Out of each one of our processes, uh, you know, we're interviewing three or less. Um, so it's really, it's really difficult to be competitive right now. You know, I understand that. What I'm saying is to skip the testing, we have to change our rules because our rules state there's a competitive test, um, but to impl implement this without a rule change would open us up to legation, period. Legation. So I, I guess the question is, is a, a competitive interview that's given a numeric score, if that could be, be considered your competitive test? I think we'd have to ask our attorney. Has this, has this gone before the city attorney? Uh, the competitive review? board interview? Yes. No. That's where it would have to go. And <sighs> if she says, yes, that's a competitive test, you know, that's fine. But otherwise, we need to do a rule change before we can implement okay. this. Each phase of our current process, uh, testing, our interviews, et cetera, each phase is supposed to bring us important and needed information the process of evaluating a candidate for employment. I understand the need to shorten or the desire to shorten up the time frame, but I cannot see a justification for losing any of those three important means of gaining information. So we want to talk about a process, streamline the process, but dispensing with or simply renaming any of the three aspects that we currently deal with, I would certainly need some more discussion on that before, <clears throat> before I was on board. I, I concur. I mean, we would definitely have to have it go before Martina, just have her review it so uh, her that it falls in line with ORCs and that uh, we're not going to be doing anything, like the chairman said, was gonna, that would come back and bite us. And, and I, I don't want it to appear that we are trying to eliminate uh, validating who our applicants are. I mean, those are, would still be a part of the process, similar to what the lateral is right now, uh, job performance, job history, experience, knowledge. Um, those things all are incorporated into what we look at, obviously, when we're selecting applicants. So it's, it, I don't want it to be um, pictured as a way to eliminate some of these validation processes that we do have in place to make sure we are following the rules and getting a valid candidate pool. Yeah, I, I, I think we all agree streamlining is the way to go. However, we have to follow our rules to help protect the city. Yeah, and I'm not and trying to circumvent everybody that. Everybody else. Yeah. Um, so my suggestion is to come up with exactly how you want to streamline it and have Martina look at it and if she says this is good to go she could write our rule up we can implement it but you know that's going to take time right um, I hate to do that too right I really do because I know we need officers but we have rules to follow and we have to adhere to them. Right, I, I completely understand. 
and again, I, I don't want uh, this presentation to be um, uh, thought of skirting the rules. Uh, that's that's not why, how we conduct our business. Um, so just something that uh, we had talked through with Amy and the chief about presenting a different opportunity. Um, it's just hard to be competitive for us right now. And I, I don't think in our current our current state uh, with churning out you know, job app apps repeatedly and not getting much resolve from it, uh, that can be a frustrating process for you guys as well. I mean, it, uh, we, we would just like to have a better applicant pool and um, really be able to strike why the iron's hot. So um, if somebody applies, we would be able to like to say, hey, we are interested in you. Uh, we will get you set up for a board interview and we're ready to go uh, to really expedite that process. So that's, that's what we're looking for. Um, in a grand scheme of things. And I've, I've, you know, I've, we've definitely noticed the plight of hiring, hiring process, but it just has to, needs to be reviewed first by Martina, so that way <clears throat> we're not stepping over our boundaries. Sure. And then bring it back. I mean, if it's, if it works and it, it's going to work and it's okie dokie with her, you can write them up and I'd be all, all about it. So. What about, do you have any opinions on having an open application process? Not until we, I mean, Martina's kind of like the advisor. Yeah. I mean, you could do an open application process, but they'd still have to take the test. Right. At yeah. this point. Right. Um, we could go along with that. I mean, if when you receive their application and everything's correct, I see no harm in bringing them in for an interview and asking them the questions and scoring, but they'd still have to take the NPR test. Okay. I thought in our discussions with Chief previously, I thought he had a test that was created in-house. Yes. Like the, like the cadet. Right. So I thought in this process it would be the interview portion first, and then that list of names that had passed through their board interview would be certified by the board and then they would move on to the in-house testing portion. That was my understanding. Right, and I uh, we did talk about that, and I think he, so he created a, a test for our cadet position, uh, which I think would be where he would draw questions from. Um, I think I, I spoke with him to get uh, further clarification, and I think he wanted to see if we could just strictly stick with a board interview, but, but certainly if if we want to do a board interview and have an in-house written test, we could try that also. I mean, I, I think at this point, we are open to exploring what avenues that can get us a better candidate pool and be more competitive. Yeah, because I was going to say, I think that would cover the both of the processes that we would need that are covered in our rules, right. that we would need and have all our bases covered, but still maybe give you the opportunity to get your, you know. I mean, I'm not saying after your interview, depending on how they score, that if, you know, the top five, you say, hey, you know, these guys did really good uh, or individuals did really well. Um, they still have to take the test, but I think with the two scores, they're going to end up at the top. I'm not saying you can't go ahead and do a background check on that individual because you're more than likely they're going to be up there. Right. Um, that would shorten your process instead of waiting until all the testing is done and then going through your checks that right. have to be done. Right. I don't see a, a big problem in rearranging the order in which it's done if it, if it helps to expedite, which we would love to see. <laughs> yeah. But as far as doing away with the test, that's... That's a legal issue that we're not yeah. able to... Can't do that right. We can't do that right now, no, sir. Okay. Well, uh, so at least the, the two job descriptions that we presented really didn't incorporate uh, a competitive board interview and then a, a written in-house test. So uh, we would not be, I guess, if, Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but ready to, to move forward with that today unless there was some language change in the advertisement. Well, here, here's the other thing. We have a um, rule change to read today, and we have to have seven days in between if the board was willing to meet next week to get that second reading of that rule change, perhaps we can have that ready okay. for, ne for next week if, if you know, whatever time the board yeah, decides. I'm checking right now. 
I'm available. Yeah, anything to, to bring the masses to the Marine for hiring. Yeah. But I yeah, I mean, there's just, there's so many things out there being offered that we don't specifically offer, but we have good benefits, we have good pay, uh, we have good city, we have good service, but to the people that are applying, maybe those things are important to them. Maybe they want the fifteen, twenty thousand dollars signing bonus that another city's handing out, or uh, you know, special assignments, or way we don't typically do business. So it's it's hard to uh, stay competitive, and really, the only way for us to do that is to get in there early, have a conversation with us, so we can sell ourselves to that potential applicant if it's someone we're interested in. And what I've also heard too is that there's a lot of departments that are promising things. And they're not holding up to the end of the bargain. They're promising right. the world and saying, oh, yeah, you're going to be K-9 or you're going to be this or you're going to be that. And then they go to the department and it's like crickets. They, uh, some agencies are saying whatever they need to to get people in the door. And that's not us. That's not the way we no, conduct ourselves. No. So. But what I suggest is have the chief write up what the order and everything he wants to do. Have Martina look over it. And if you could tell Martina that... Um, we would need a rule change. She could write that up and possibly, if it's a go, we could have the first reading next Thursday. Okay. If okay. that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to release the advertisement. Is there anything else? Uh, beyond that, the uh, rule change, we uh, we appreciate uh, your consideration in that. That's just going to, I'm not too sure what conversation the chief had, but we typically would get uh, calls from uh, places that are having uh, issues within our department, like New York or Chicago, and coming down and asking if they could do a lateral move to us. And this would allow us to get that person with experience in, in the door. So uh, we appreciate your consideration on that. Okay. Well, today's the second reading, and it should be a go. Thank you. Today's the first reading. Oh, today's the first? Okay, so we could do the second one next Thursday. Her, if you're available, correct. Are you available, Chief? Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Correct, the 13th. The rule change has been included in your packets. It's rule 19, section 5, um, B. B. And, yes. Yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> the only change that has been made is the highlight portion. Highlighted portion in the packet has been added. Okay. First reading of section 5, rule B. It's police patrol officer lateral entry criteria. B, certified as a law enforcement officer by the Ohio Peace Officers Training Commission or a substantially similar and equivalent police training program and or certification from another state or federal agency and be current with all applicable continuing education requirements. So that concludes the first reading. Any other business? Meeting adjourned at 1119. Yeah, I...